Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and to part two of building the Saracen's Head pub. And this is what we did last week. So we have done the doors and well the windows we didn't have to do because I've bought uh, bought some for that. But um yeah so far so good. Um now the biggest change I'm going to find at the moment I had uh, pre-planned it to build it uh, like a terraced house around the back but I've been on Google Earth since to see if I could find out any information by looking at the pub from the top like so if you can imagine that was Google Earth and we're looking down and um, well, you can't really see much at the moment because um, it's not all there. But um, yeah, it gave me an idea of what's going on around the back of this uh, pub. So, let's go back to the bench and um, see if I can redraw the drawing. So here is my original plan. And judging by what I have seen on Google this is wrong so we're not going to bother with that and basically when you look um, at the roof on Google the building is an ob oblong shape so if I just flip this over and if you look at what I've got here I have added in the two extra apexes. Originally it was just the one, but now we have two, one here and one there. And the red line shows how it's got to be done. And um, yeah, so that's what it looks like on Google. Obviously it looks longer, it looks really huge this building it may have been not only a pub but a hotel originally so that's how I'm going to do it now um, obviously space wise I've kept it down to a fairly reasonable um, size so I can be able to fit it somewhere on the layout I mean if I wanted to build it original you're looking at another uh, 100 mil plus um, in that direction which would make this building too big to fit anywhere on the layout which would be a, a shame but um, there you go so what we need is this outline yet again so I'll have to cut another one of these for the back end but what I'll do is I'll still use the two doors that I've painted one there and one there where that window is and then just have the smaller windows in there um, there'd be no windows running down the side of the building um, just in case I'm going to put, put buildings or something up against it because as we know this building or this pub is sandwiched between a church and shops anyway we have now cut the rear wall so that this is the rear of the building and it's the same exactly the same profile as the front and it matches um, more or less perfectly well within a few thousand of a mil um, yeah so what I've done differently this time is I've just done the horizontal lines and uh, that way I can see where I've marked out my windows um, when I marked out the windows for this one I've come in 21 mil to the center line and then score the line down but what I might do with the rear um, of the building is add an extra window in here there'll definitely be an extra window there and uh, the door will be there and then there so yeah that's what I'm gonna do I might add an extra window in there I have now cut out all the windows for the back and uh, and and I'm not going to put, put them in the middle because we need to leave that space for the uh, drain pipe 
So the next thing I want to do is carry these lines across onto the side wall and then do the same with the front wall so that these lines marry up so it'll, there's some sort of uh, uniformity there when all four walls are together. So that's what I'm going to do next, just uh, carry them lines across. I have now finished scribing all four walls and I've cut out where all the windows are going to be front and back. So the next thing to do is to start putting these four walls together. Um, but in order to do that we have to put in some supports for the um, ground floor ceiling and the first floor ceiling. And um, basically I'm just using some um, two mil card, three mil um, strips. And hopefully that will be enough to give that a good support. And um, on this wall here on the left hand side I have left a space for a chimney. Now if you have been following some of my bills chimneys are normally the uh, perfect place to hide cables and um, I'm planning on at least um, detailing both sides of the bar and at least one of the upper rooms and, um, and the only place to hide the cable especially on the, on the ground floor is down through the chimney but uh, we'll come to that as we move further on. For the first ceiling I've measured up 35 millimeters from the base and for the first floor ceiling I've measured 68 millimeters um, up from the base. Just in case uh, any of you guys are, are following this build to build it yourself so I just thought I'd mention that and basically we've got 10 millimeters at the top here or no no until light we have eight millimeters and that will be roughly the drop we're going to need for the ceiling because it's set in from that edge but uh, that we shall um, talk about later on in the build. So as you can see I have glued them to the underside of the lines. So 35mm and then underneath the line, 68mm and underneath the line. So it gives you plenty of uh, height, height for your, your figures if you decide to put any figures inside. So the next thing I want to do is stick the chimney to this side wall. Um, so the cables for the LEDs will come in here and here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a slot right down the center of that and then cover it up with a, another piece of card, but it'll be only one mil thick. And uh, hopefully that should be enough channel in there for six individual cables but uh, we shall see about that I have now as you can see cut out the chimney breast um, which is roughly about seven millimeters out the middle so it should be plenty and I've pre-drilled the holes at 35 mil and 68 and uh, I've also cut out the recess there for the apex of the roof so once that's flipped over it's flush with the top on the outside as you can see um, some detailing to come up this edge so that will hide or mask any of the joints that we have here but that's what it looks like on the inside bearing in mind we have the ceilings that come across the center of those holes or yeah the center of those holes so that should hide 
um, any cables, not only that, when we put the fireplace over that one, that will conceal the cables once the cables are in there. So I can safely now glue this to this wall. I have left a millimeter gap at the bottom for the half, the fireplace half, as it were. So that can be made later on. So there's the chimney breast done, apart from the detailing around the top, which we can do later on. Now that the chimney breast is glued in place, it's time to cover up these bits of card uh, where I've joined them together. So I have cut out a piece of paper, all pre-shaped to go around the chimney top. Uh, Pressed, and hopefully it'll hide all the card edges as you can see so we'll just glue that in place and then when the glue is dried we'll just um, score some stone uh, bricks into it to give the illusion that it's stone so we'll just uh, Glue this in place. Right, and we shall leave that to dry. So now we're going to move on to the two ceilings, but basically the bar ceiling, as it were. So we'll let this uh, chimney breast dry while we concentrate on the bar ceiling. So what we'll do, we'll flip it over and this is the underside. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some oak beams into these, onto the ceiling just by using some 2mm um, square cut card. And as you can see I've left a 2mm line along there so that will sit on this ledge here and these wooden beams were just put straight up to that ledge uh, you see we've got a space there um, that space will represent stairs going up into the next floor and uh, but I, I don't think I'll be putting any stairs in because let's face it you, you won't be able to see them so this is what I've had in mind, um, as you can see I have stuck on the LEDs ready, um, a little bit of a change of plan, the cables for these I won't be taking down the um, chimney breast but the cables for the upper floors that we do will be going down the chimney breast, it's just if I've got two walls here I can you might as well just bring the cables down through them rather than trying to um, take them down the chimney. So that's what I've got in mind. So now we can start gluing the building together because I still have access from the bottom for painting this and from the top to paint the top floor. So now I'm just going to glue all this together. Right, so now we're going to start on the 
internal walls on the ground floor. So this wall here is the first wall you come across as soon as you go through the main entrance here and it's on the right hand side which just slots in there nicely and then like so and then this other wall will go in here like so and the gap between the two walls should in theory represent the stairs going up to the upper floor hence why we have a door here and I will put a little door in here as well so it looks like we've got access from both bars as it were to go upstairs so uh, and these are the infills which will separate the two walls so basically the same as I've done with the doors uh, originally at the start of part one I shall be gluing a couple of these laser cut doors together and uh, cutting them down to size and that's what I've done here notice I have notched out the corners um, for the supports and also I've notched out this corner here because I've increased the thickness here because I think that's a bit uh, flimsy then. so I've glued another piece of card on the back there just to give that a little bit extra strength but not before I put some framing around the doors so I'm just cutting a millimeter strip off this piece of um, thin card for the door frames to go around the door and I might even paint the doors because they're tricky now before I glue the wall in right I've decided not to do any painting just yet um, because I uh, still want to get these internal walls finished um, as you can see I have glued the uh, bar front into the wall just to uh, give this bit of cardio a little bit of protection because I've noticed that I keep knocking it and with that super glued in there now that will hold that uh, firmly right the other thing I've been up to is this internal wall which runs alongside this wall and it fits in just like that uh, I don't know if you can see this, but if you look, if there's a chance that you can see through that window and that door, you'll be able to see a few steps. It's just in case. You might not be able to see it, but uh, we'll shall see. Maybe when the building's lit up, who knows. Right, so we have a little bit of a dilemma now. Um, once this wall is glued in, uh, I've even restricted myself access to soldering the cables to these LEDs. And I think I'm going to have to pause for now and start painting these ceilings and soldering the cables to the LEDs. And, uh, and then I can fit this wall. And then I'll be able to just um, leave the cables um, coiled up until we're ready for the um, lighting up later. We've moved on quite a bit so far. Um, we've got the ceiling done. The LEDs are in and wired up and uh, they do work, uh, which is luckily for me. Um, I think it was a good idea coming down through the centre of the building. I mean, I don't think I've got all that long down through that middle chimney there, I don't think so. Uh, plus the other two sets of lights as well for the upper floor. But there you go, so that's done. Um, I've painted the doors uh, uh, in a mahogany colour. Um, I just used some of that uh, LMS red and added a bit of brown just to turn it down. And that's uh, worked out quite well. And uh, if we um, 
turn the building around you can just about make up the steps which I've painted as well which is in there I don't know if you can see it but there are some steps in there which hopefully will uh, we might be able to see if we look through the window there uh, I doubt it but who knows it's uh, a little detail that's there and these are the windows that I'm using f um, in part one. Um, I explained that the windows I'm using are from the Wills um, kit. And they kind of look like the windows that are in the photograph. As you can see, we have um, a, fr uh, well, a lintel framework around the window, as it were. So kind of matches what we've got in the photograph and I'm just lining them up parallel to each other and also just checking to make sure that when we put the actual window frame into these lintels that they will match in the middle Um, the reason why I'm not putting these in yet because the outside's got to be painted and I'll be painting these frames to match the stonework. So I'm just using this polyurethane quick contact glue and just putting it around the edges and uh, it does stick to the card. And it actually melts the plastic to the card. So I'm do is just square these window frames up with each other. And just do a quick check to make sure that the glass panels when it goes in is central. Bearing in mind that uh, once these are glued, you can't uh, shift them without ripping the card up. As long as that ends up central. Which it does. And we can just add some more glue. What I tend to do with uh, using contact is run it into the crevice of the windows. So it goes between the plastic and the card. And that will fix in nicely, that will. Perfect. Now that the lintels are in, um, I've now moved on to painting inside the bar areas. Um, this is the second coat of yellow uh, I have made up for the bar areas um, using a matte 34 which is the white and a matte 154 which is the yellow and it's roughly 50-50. And it brings out a yellow tone as it were um, so that's where we are now um, just finishing off this last bit and then we can move back onto the outside of the building again because there's still more work to do on the outside um, these card area edges I'm going to have to cover them up now we're doing the edging for the building. Um, as you can see I've um, scored four lines and basically once all this is marked out I'll be cutting it out on this line here so I'll have two sets of edges which should be enough to do all four corners of that building. Um, so what I've done is I've marked 11 millimeters, 11 millimeters, and then 5.5 and then 5.5 again. 
So once I cut this out, we'll be able to fold it on that line and cut out each one of these here, which represents a sandstone. And then what we'll do, we'll come in from this edge, uh, 2.5, and uh, mark the opposites. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So let's, uh, let's have a look here. So I said two and a half millimetres from that edge. So, so, so two and a half millimetres. Making sure it's equal both ways, top and bottom. Two and a half. I'm just going a little bit over two and a half because you've got to allow for the thickness of the pencil. So as you can see, I'm coming along and see where you've got two there and then the big one. I'm just marking out the opposite side of those. Now it don't look much at the moment. But it will do once we start cutting these out. So you cut your strip out and then you fold it, which should get a nice crease. So that will help later on. And then you start cutting out the pieces that you've marked with a cross on. And then hopefully you'll have a stone edge. Right, so once you get it to this stage, and as you can see, it folds back over quite easily because we've already pre-folded earlier. So the next thing to do is just to put some PVA glue on the back and uh, stick it on the corner. All right, so that goes that way up. Make sure it's flush with the bottom. And it's, it will find its own way because we've already pre folded it earlier on in the video, so it should uh, be smack on the corner. It's a little bit of an overhang there, but uh, I can trim that off once the uh, glue has gone off. And then we should end up with something like this. And that just finishes off the corner. It hides the card. Not only that, you could probably do this with brick card as well. But uh, there you go. Right, so we've done these edges now. So that's done. I'm happy with uh, the way that's turned out. So the next thing I'll do is concentrate on these pelmets. You've got one there and you've got one there as well which goes up against the um, the shop front if you like um, so I'm going to concentrate on making them so we've got one long one on the, on the front and there'll be two long ones going on the back so that'll it's more or less what we've got here so we shall do that next how I'm going to do it I'm going to use some 1 mil card some 3mm by 1mm strip, I'm going to glue that to the card and then I've got some half round here which is uh, 2 millimeters by 0.8 I'm going to glue that onto, onto there and then to finish it off I'm going to get a piece of 1mm round and put it underneath and um, that should give us an interesting look to what I'm trying to achieve 
it's more or less going to look like a dado rail but uh, yeah that should look quite good if I just hold it up to the camera you'll see what I mean if I get that in the right order so that's the plan I just hold it there you'll see what I'm trying to do As you can see, this is what it looks like edge on with the half round and the round plastic strip. Well, we've come on a long way this week um, with the structure actually coming together. We've added a few details with the um, stones on the side, um, the fascia running along the top, um, we've done some work inside the building as well with the early days, the ceiling and adding a few doors and yeah we've uh, come a long way this week and uh, hopefully next week we shall make a start on this here and I might copy that idea and stick it on the back of the building as well because at the moment I've just got two door openings so I don't think I've shown you the back yet so let's quickly turn this around and there you go that's what the back looks like at the moment and so what I'll do is I'll probably put two of those porches in one there and one there and uh, Yes, we're getting there slowly. So, until next time, have a good weekend, enjoy your model railways, and uh, see you back here. It's almost opening time. Bye for now. Bye.